Hello everybody and welcome back to Trek Yards. I am Commander Foley. I'm Sub Praetor the third, twice removed goggles. Yes, and we're reporting from the flagship of the USS or the RMS or the whatever Trek Yards. Yes, flagship, we're here. Hi. Hi, Stuart. Stuart, we got several new ships. We got several new we ships. Did. We did. Um, we did. We did. Yes, indeed. one was a kit bash, and that's a okay. One was a reuse from Picard, that's a okay. But we've got two new ships today. We're looking at the the one of one, the Roman flagship, uh, as seen in the season finale of Stranger World season one, a la the Picard battle, a hundred fifty years earlier. Because the first shot, I mean, if you don't get flashbacks. What did you think when these ships at first appeared, Stuart? And were you getting Picard flashbacks? I wasn't getting Picard flashbacks until you mentioned it, honestly. Um, but I, wh what I did think was, wow, you spent this time modeling new Romulan ships that we're probably never going to see again, and you couldn't make a new class for the Sombra last week. Well, and also two mining drones that weren't made yet. Like, they're brand new models. Every single ship in this fleet, except the Enterprise and the Picard one, are new models, and yet we couldn't get a Sombra. So, yes, fair point. Um, but I mean, for me, this was, you know, for me, this was them saying, we know we F, because the same VFX company, we know we effed up on Picard season one. This works a lot better, even though, and this is a general point with for the flagship, even though it's not almost the exact same thing. It is three classes of ship on the Fed side and repeated designs, and three classes on the Robin side, repeated designs. But because it's not an identical one ship times a hundred for ROM and one flagship, it feels better. And because a lot less ships, this is a better fleet size. Well, like 15, 20 each. Having it be 70 loses all value. This is already kind of pushing it size-wise, but this was a like, okay, good. We've grounded it a bit more. It's already huge. But given that these are mining ones, it doesn't matter for the Fed, that works well. And these Romans are obviously watching the Bats of Terror, waiting to hear about this brand spanking new, you know, we're going to destroy the Federation test attack. So I guess it kind of makes sense. There's a fleet on standby close enough. Um, but in the middle there, we do get a flagship. So here is the one close-up we get to kind of show the three detail. Our next shot will be the, the breakdown. And you do get to see the entire design if you combine views. So we'll get that in a minute. But here is a close-up. What do you think, Stuart? And uh, did the design register to you? It's our first, and this is our first non-TOS era or Change of World era Romulan ship. Away from the classic design. This is that's what these two designs new ones are gonna be. They're the first this era Roman design. I did notice it and I did kind of go, ooh, very interesting. Um, but this it was a very quick shot, honestly, because this this showing off way more than I caught with my eye first time. So. It also brightened them and um, such. I was trying to hunt. Yeah, exactly. And I'll say it again. I love the plasma torpedo effect. But this one has very much of a that bird motif yet again. It looks like a bird with its mouth open and its wings upstretched. Um, cool design. And you can see some, just with the way the windows are lined and the fact that they're just round portholes reminds me a lot of the Dideridex. So, yeah, this is actually very cool. And I do love Romulan designs from FASA and whatnot, so this could fit right in. I like it. Yeah, I'll, I'll give vague spoilers to both episodes. I like both of the new Romulan designs. I think they both are good designs versus the ones from Picard, which were okay at best. All, actually, all four of them were okay at best. Range, you're not so good. This is interesting, because yes, you're right, I definitely clocked the, the Derodex style. I mean, they, they look, I mean, you can tell it's a texture, right? You can tell it's just plastered on low, I mean, it's not a very high detail mesh. You can visibly see that even from just this one shot. I and mean, it's kind of bold of them to get this close, because it's clearly not that good a model. And that's actually okay in this context. It kind of works. It does probably feel a little bit too big with the window size, but the Derodex kind of works. How do you feel, though, about having the Plasma Torpedo, which was explicitly a t prototype test weapon in TOS, already be on this flagship? Yeah, I never really considered that till you just said it. And yeah, it's a bit of a problem because the, uh, the Bird of Prey and Balance of Terror was the test bed for the Plasma Torpedo. Um, uh, I like it. I wish the Plasma Torpedo would have been used more. I wish it would have been carried over to T uh, TNG. I didn't even think about that until you just mentioned it. So good call on that. What did you think? So I, I like it in general because this Praetor lady is very um, gung-ho. And this ship is clearly designed with this weapon in, in mind at the front. 
Uh, I was trying to close it without it firing to kind of get a vibe of the general ship. But I actually, I actually kind of like it as a basic idea. The idea that, you know, she co... When when the, her engineers were saying, let's we've got this weapon idea, okay, we'll put it into one of our small, uh, you know, expendable ships. Or in fact, to miniaturize it, because that could be, there could be two ways of looking at it. The tech could be designed to, to work on a ship this size, so the tech's not new, but miniaturizing it into the Bird of Prey design, because if you can miniaturize it to that small, then you can have your entire fleet use the weapon. So I took it more as that. The tech's been around for two, three years. This was its first version. You know, the Doomsday ship, in terms of, like, it's got a powerful weapon, but my god, can I make it smaller? Um, so I actually kind of liked it. The fact that clearly none of the ships can do it, it was the unique one and this one. So I'm actually fine with that in the context. It was um, The way it's presented out here, I, I, I don't mind. I kind of like it. Um, it's le it is less special now, but I think of all the ships, a, the Praetor's, not just a fleet, Admiral, the Praetor's ship. That feels like, yes, I, I can go with that. You know, you got that line. Like if it was, if it was Commodore O, the equivalent of like, nah. But the Praetor, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd buy that, sure. Miniaturized version, more. Maybe the ship isn't capable of cloaking because it's so oh, large. I wouldn't have, we don't yeah, know I wouldn't think what, so. what what the cloaking did technology is like at the time. Because in Balance of Terror, the cloak was also new, and this one as well, because it cloaks and Pike looks at Spock, and Spock's like. Mm. <laughs> well, that's so. that's obviously a problem with Discovery. They introduce cloaking devices. And they do call them cloaking devices. Don't be let it be fooled. They call them invisibility screens. So they call them cloaking devices several times, both Federation and Klingon. So they are cloaking devices. They're just ignoring that entirely. But I didn't get the sense any of these ships could cloak. These are all warships, not cloak. So I, I like it, it maintains. Um, but yeah, the next. Well, it still keeps the it still keeps the bird of prey being a test bed that can cloak and have this powerful weapon as well. So all, all of its systems are diverted to those two things. That's why I can't. So this is the close-up, which gives you a sense of sort of the detail. The next view, though, is a collage of the views. And actually, through doing some quick modifications, some upgrading, some uh, some photoshopping, I was able to kind of like streamline this. We've got the front view, the front side, the side, and the back. And this, I think, gives you a very clear indication of what it doesn't like, especially that bottom left. I mean, you said earlier, the bird outstretched. Very literal, but I am... Uh, I'm for it in this design. I think it actually works quite well. It, it's the side view's a bit more other things because of the head, but I think overall I get what they're doing here. And I quite like it. Well, like that that upper left picture, it looks like a bird attacking with its beak open and its claws outstretched, and that's very cool for the, for the Romulans. The one issue I have with the views here is the side view looks like a luxury liner with all those windows. There's too many windows. It just feels like, you know, a, a passenger ship out on the ocean at night. A um, little bit too much windows going on there for me. Other than that, I do really like the design. Uh, and it does feel very aggressive. It, it feels more bird than spaceship, whereas Dodex had a beautiful balance between them. But it also, because it was only one of one, thank goodness, it almost feels like she just, the Predator just said, build me a giant, giant, giant ship that's just obscene because it's you know also a status symbol i mean if this thing warps into your system because it's running star empire you're gonna say yeah i can see eight disruptor cannons on both its wings that are giant and pew pew -y. let's let's just not attack it so i can again her, based on what she showed us i can buy it i don't like however the side view with how much the head looks like the alien in a jaw because the front, it kind of looks okay as a, as a head, but the side, it's so that specifically. Uh, it needs more of that that nose of the Dodex to kind of ground it a bit. I, I thought it had from other views, so I'm, I'm kind of surprised. So that, you know, I think that would have improved it a bit. Yeah, there are elements here, especially from the back. Like, it, it looks like this is a good um, predecessor to the Dodex. Like you take those wings and you just fold them down. You got the same kind of shape at the back for the Dideridex. You bump that up. Even the center section. Yeah, okay, I can see that. With with some real like shifting and morphing, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I do appreciate that for sure. I, it, the front, like you said, yes, it looks very alien in her mouthy thing, um, which looks kind of silly. It would have been better if there was like a section that maybe dropped down for the plasma to... And then closed closed up. in like a like a mouth physically yeah so it, it, yeah this is a cool design I actually can't wait to see it 
a 3D model or like a physical model from Eagle Mouse or something. Yeah, and as I said earlier in the video, it now this with the the warship we've actually got now. And again, it's Strangely Worlds visual reboot retcon. We can't necessarily take it for granted. It's going to be the vibe going forward. Fine, whatever. But it's definitely you know our first TOS ish era era, uh, era stuff and. Romulans especially don't change designs much. Klingons don't as well. So these things, like this thing, was, they would still be around, you know, late TOS, Rathacon era, etc. I, I, if it was me, I'd say it's fifteen percent too bird-like, like literal. That that I would tweak, but not far off. I think it's definitely solid. I I much prefer it to the uh, Picard designs, which just feels so. Yeah, it's got a few. It's got a few things that kind of remind me of the Terror Bird, which is what's Trekyard's originals that we we had done with a friend of mine designed. Um, yeah, I like the bird motif for the Romulans. I think it's a good idea. Hmm. Big fan. Well, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the ship. I gotta say, I just want to wish we could see more of it. I don't think we're gonna see more of it because we're not supposed to see Romulans. Especially not era, the so. Praetor's giant flagship. You think that would that would um, be noted and record and. You know, you get scans of it, you can see what they're capable of doing, etc. Uh, but there you go, guys. Views that you probably didn't catch from the original episode, because they are blink and you'll miss them. So make sure you hit that like button, guys. Subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to um, let us know what you thought in the comment section down below. And by all means, join us for lives where we discuss this kind of thing and more. We do love talking with you guys. We have a great community. We want you to be a part of it. So make sure that notification bell icon is clicked so you don't miss any of our breakdown videos or our lives. And, and... Super chatting during those lives are super important. It's sort of in the name. Uh, anything you want to say towards the topic or just in ge general, put down. Uh, it helps us out directly because this channel does rely on your donations, your help, support. To keep going and doing stuff like this, as we have done for years and years. Let us go for even more years by supporting. Or in the description, there's Patreon, there's the PayPal, there's the join the channel link. All the links, support anywhere you can, and any and all helps. That's right. So until next time. He's still sub commander Hawkins. The site what he's sub telling you sub praetor. No, you're not. Oh, you're oh. not though. Just sorry. Too much my business card. I business card just oh. Yeah, it's, it's just it's too a flip much. out though. It keeps going. Uh -huh, uh -huh, and he's uh -huh. Captain Foley. Commander Foley. Anyway, bye guys. Bye, guys.